In today's show, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss make the case for a $500,000 Bitcoin price. That's right. They just published this yesterday on their blog, Winklevoss Capital, entitled The Case for $500,000 Bitcoin, and it outlines exactly how Bitcoin will surpass a half a million dollars. I'll be giving you some of the highlights right here in today's show. They go on to share, if we're right about using a goal framework to value Bitcoin and Bitcoin continues on this path, then the bull case scenario for Bitcoin is that it's undervalued by a multiple of 45 said differently, the price of Bitcoin could appreciate 45x from where it is today, which means we can see a price of 500,000 US dollars per Bitcoin. And then they actually go on to share. If the central banks start to diversify their foreign fiat holdings, even partially into Bitcoin, say 10%, then 45x gets revised upwards towards 55x or $600,000 per Bitcoin and so forth. Once again, I'll be giving you all the juicy highlights from this report right here in today's show. We'll also be taking a look at the latest from plan B of the infamous stock to flow model who just tweeted Friday fun modeling Bitcoin price with central bank balance sheets, 90% R2, recent quantitative easing fueled explosion of the Fed and balance sheets to 7 trillion and 6.4 trillion implies a price of $20 million per Bitcoin. Talking about some hopium right here in today's show. Also, Dan Tapiro just tweeted, prepare to be patient in Bitcoin. Each up cycle takes longer to play out and is less extreme as absolute dollar value gets much larger. May or may not be another six to 12 months before the price breaks up. Should not matter as the end price point is obscenely higher. Hodlers, rejoice. We'll be discussing this right here in today's show. Also, in today's episode, three reasons why you're in finance, better known as YFI, just touched a brand new all-time high of $18,000 this morning. Also in today's show, traders say the Bitcoin price now faces two main scenarios, either $16,000 or $9,600. I'll be breaking down why this is right here in today's show. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. Hallelujah, Bitcoin, Ethereum, most of the major altcoins are back in the green, but where's the Bitcoin price likely to go from here? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day just like this and before we kick off today's show if interested in tapping into opm and leveraging other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio smash the link right below this video in the description and register for this free system entitled opm wealth all right welcome back to another episode of crypto news alerts i'm your host jv lots to discuss today lots a hopium, but let's kick it off by diving into today's top story of the day. Tyler Winklevoss tweeted just yesterday, the US dollar is no longer a reliable store of value. Touche. And I make the case for a $500,000 Bitcoin price. And then we had his brother, Cameron Winklevoss. And if you missed the memo, they became the first crypto, or I should say, Bitcoin billionaires. If there was ever a time to hedge against inflation, that time has come, says Tyler Winklevoss. And I make the case for a $500,000 Bitcoin. Here we go. I'm going to be giving you some of the highlights highlights of this report also include it in the show notes below the video in the description so you can reference it and check it out for yourself so here we go gold and oil have historically been reliable stores of value because they're scarce commodities they make dependable hedges to the inflation of fiat currencies and as a result they have commanded price premiums above and beyond the demand for their consumption alone now for the last 75 years the u.s dollar has also been a reliable store of value Hmm. This is a result of the comparatively good management by the Fed and the strength, resilience, and reputation of the U.S. economy, or the fact that they bomb any country who does not go along with their central banking shenanigans, one or the other. Now, in fact, it is the most widely held fiat currency in the world by force military force, that is, and recognizes the global reserve currency, denominating and settling the majority of international trade, at least for the time being. With that being said, we believe there's fundamental problems with gold, oil, and the U.S. dollar as stores of value going forward. Below, we will make the case that Bitcoin is ultimately the long-term protection against inflation. And I agree 100%. Let me know your thoughts in the comments right down below, because Bitcoin is the only asset with a limited supply. We can't say the same for fiat. They just print trillions out of thin air. We can't say the same about silver or gold, meaning we have to trust a third party 
to base that scarcity that it's actually real. Meanwhile, we have people like Elon Musk talking about mining asteroids in outer space, which could potentially be filled with precious metals such as gold. So is there a true scarcity built into gold? I don't think so. Now, here's the big problems with the US dollar. Now, I don't wanna be preaching to the choir. We all know as they continue to print more and more money out of thin air, it devalues the dollar. So what good is that? Yeah, we're gonna create more jobs and stimulate the economy by printing trillions and bailing out all these major corporations while giving peasants literally peanuts. What's wrong with this scenario is your dollar is worth less and less and less. It's called inflation, and we could witness hyperinflation. I think it's a sign of the times now that we're witnessing 0% interest rates, and it's only a matter of time before we have negative interest rates. And when that happens, I mean, the dollar is doomed. I just saw an article yesterday of Vladimir Putin dumping banks as well, just like Warren Buffett recently did, and buying gold. That's right, because they're hedging against the dollar and what could potentially happen as a result of all this money printing we're witnessing right now. Check this out. After pounding the turbo for more than a decade, the U.S. government was left with no choice but to pound it again. And practically overnight, the Fed waved its magic wand and increased the supply of U.S. dollars in circulation by $3 trillion, just like that. So the Fed is ultimately Harry Potter with a magic wand uh, doing sorcery to the money supply. Now examining the Fed's balance sheet uncovers that it added 344 billion more mortgage-backed securities and 820 billion more long-term treasury from February 20th to July 20th. In other words, of the 3 trillion increase, 1.1 trillion was printed. To put it all into perspective, the Fed printed two-thirds as much money in the last six months as it did over the prior 11 years. And that's not all. The Fed has committed to a YOLO, whatever it takes, quantitative easing posture going forward. As the chairman, Jerome Powell, just announced recently. Now, this this is the Federal Reserve balance sheet. And as you can see, the deficit continues to grow. So I think we can all agree that printing our way out of debt isn't going to solve anything. We can't solve the problems with the same level of thinking which has created it. You know what I mean if you ask me? However, there's going to be major winners and losers. We all know who the winners are going to be, which is the top 1%. Don't expect much of a trickle down whatsoever. We're lucky if we get our stimulus, which they do that so you're dependent upon the U.S dollar so they can probably force vaccinate you and make you do things you normally would not do if you weren't dependent upon the dollar. Now to exit this corrupt fiat system, we have Bitcoin. That's the exit from the matrix. Just saying, there's winners and losers. We all know who the big winners are and the big losers are, which is the majority of the population. Now there's problems with oil. Oil is no longer a reliable store of value. There's the supply. Technological advancements in fracking have dramatically increased and the supply of the oil has been called into question. The Herbert Peak theory and other peak oil theories. It turns out there's much more oil underground than anyone ever thought. So there you have it. And also storing oil can be quite the problem. And now we're going to talk about some of the problems problems with gold, which are quite obvious if you ask me. Currently, gold is a reliable store of value as it's been around for thousands of years and is the classic inflation hedge. Supply. The supply of gold is actually unknown. Many of you don't know that, right? While gold remains scarce or precious on planet Earth, the same cannot be said with respect to our galaxy. As I pointed out earlier, scientists believe that asteroids contain a plethora of metals, including gold, and have compiled the database of over 600,000 asteroids and their compositions. So there you have it. We can't trust gold because nobody knows what the market supply is. It could be vast and infinite. And for the first time in human history, Bitcoin solves that problem with true scarcity, which is the answer. Here we go. The answer, according to the Winklevoss twins, we've laid out all the problems with the US dollar, oil, and gold. Now let's talk about the solution. But first, let's establish a few general ideas and some perspectives on money. Money is a technology. And like any technology, money can always be improved upon and iterated on. Money has been many things over the years, including but not limited to shells, beads, metal, paper backed by metal, paper not backed by metal, and much more. Ultimately, money is whatever we all agree it is. That's a fact. Now, Bitcoin is the world's first internet native money, which is to say money purpose built for the internet, better known as magical internet money. It works the same way that your email works, which is not the case for all other forms of money. Now, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are networks, not companies, and should be valued using Macau's law. Methods used to value companies such as discounted cash flow models simply won't work. Even drawing a stock market bubble analogies is comparing apples and oranges. 
Bitcoin is not just a scarce commodity. It's the only known commodity in the universe that has a deterministic and fixed supply. As a result, Bitcoin is not subject to any of the potential positive supply shocks that gold or any commodity for that matter may face in the future. Now, beyond superior supply attributes, Bitcoin possesses all of the other characteristics that make gold valuable and actually performs better on a side to side comparison. As we can see right here, comparing Bitcoin versus gold. Bitcoin, we have fixed scarcity. Gold is scarce, but not fixed supply. Now durability, software versus hardware. Portability, there's no comparison whatsoever, as Bitcoin can be sent anywhere in the world via the internet, just like an email. Whereas portability with gold, try walking around with it without getting confiscated by the government. Disability, a Bitcoin can be divided into 100 million Satoshis, whereas a gold may be by a troy ounce. Storage, we have a digital wallet for Bitcoin. For gold, you got to store that in a safe or vault or trust somebody that they're actually storing your gold and it hasn't been turned to tungsten, which I've seen many stories about as well. And what about counterfeit difficulty? Well, with Bitcoin, not only is it extremely expensive and nearly impossible and has not occurred to this date, now 11 years into existence, with dollars, we can't say the same because it's it's difficult and possible nonetheless, and it's also laundered, and the most common form of money laundering is U.S. Dollar, just saying. And now adoption, the market cap of Bitcoins currently 200 billion USD, the same net worth of Jeff Bezos. Go figure, he can actually purchase up all the Bitcoin in the market. Hmm. All right, now let's get to the fun part we've all been waiting for, the hopium, the Bitcoin case to the moon. Inflation is coming. Money stored in a bank will get run over. Money invested in assets like real estate or the stock market will keep pace. Money stored in gold or Bitcoin will outrun the scourge, and money stored in Bitcoin will run the fastest, overtaking gold. As Paul Tudor Jones once said, Bitcoin is the fastest horse in the race. Let me know if you agree in the comments right down below. It's true. Gold has a multi-millennia head start and strong foundation of trust. As as a result, it might be the right short-term, medium-term choice for risk-averse types. After all, Bitcoin is still young and therefore carries both significant technological risk as well as political risk in certain jurisdictions. Nonetheless, we believe that Bitcoin will continue to cannibalize gold and that this story will play out dramatically over the next decade. The rate of technological adoption is growing exponentially. Software is eating the world and gold is on the menu. And as you can see in this graph, it shows you the number of telephones to smartphones going from no phones to landlines to mobile phones, to smartphones, so you can see the adoption curve. Now, Bitcoin has already made significant ground on gold. That's a fact. Going from its white paper to over 200 billion in market cap in under a decade. Today, the market cap of above ground gold is conservatively $9 trillion. And if we're right about using a gold framework to value Bitcoin and Bitcoin continues on this path, then the bull case scenario for Bitcoin is that it's undervalued by a multiple of 45. Said differently, the price of Bitcoin could appreciate 45x from where it is today, which means we can see a price of 500,000 US dollars per Bitcoin. If you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to hit a half a million dollars, let me know in the comments right down below if you agree or disagree with the Winklevoss twins. Now, all of this does not factor in the possibility of Bitcoin displacing some portion of the $11.7 trillion of fiat foreign exchange reserves held by governments. Foreshadowing this, at least one publicly traded U.S. corporation has begun holding Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. And if the banks start to diversify their foreign fiat holdings, even partially into Bitcoin, say 10 percent, then 45x gets revised upwards towards 55x or $600,000 per Bitcoin and so forth. So there you have it. That's the case for the $500,000 Bitcoin price. If you agree with the Winklevoss twins and feel that the Bitcoin price is likely to surpass a half a million dollars, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and drop me a comment right down below. And before we take a look at these tweets from Plan B of the infamous Stock the Flow model as well as Dan Tapiro. First, let's take a look at the overall crypto market. We can see Bitcoin, Ethereum, and most of the major altcoins finally back in the green, which I love to see. We see Bitcoin hovering above that $11,400 support. It's good that we've been maintaining that critical 10,500 support. I feel if we break below that, then we're likely to fill some CME futures gaps, which we'll talk about a little later at the $96 to $9,700 range. But Bitcoin's been maintaining. Bitcoin needs to retest that $12,000 resistance, flip it into support. And I feel once we can do that, we can climb on up to 13,000 and eventually move into a range of between 15 to $17,000 
price here in the short term. We have Ethereum up 1.7%, trading at $392. We have Chainlink up 1.5%, trading at $15.04. XRP, barely in the green. Tezos up about 1%, trading at $3.28. BNB up 0.86%, trading at $22. And we have this small cap coin called Boom, which is currently up literally 177,000%. But guess what? There's only 1.2 Bitcoin in volume in the past 24 hours. But I had to throw that in there because the gains we witness in crypto are the type of gains you experience nowhere else. It only exists in the crypto verse. You feel me? And checking out some of the top exchange volume, we can see Binance up a whopping 22% with 9 billion in volume. OKEX down 12% with 2.7 billion. BitMEX up 1.7% with 2.7 billion in volume. And Hobby Global down 0.8% with 2.3 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. And now taking a look at the latest from Plan B of the infamous stock to flow model. Friday fun, modeling Bitcoin price with central bank balance sheets, 90% R2, recent quantitative easing fueled explosion of the Fed and the ECB balance sheets to 7 trillion and 6.4 trillion implies a Bitcoin price of $20 million. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this hit from the infamous Hopium Bong. Now let's check out some of the responses to this tweet. Hags Hoddle responded, so wait, what do you do to the Bitcoin price numbers say when US goes full Japan and balance sheet is 100% or more of the GDP? And Plan B responded, I think that after Powell's speech yesterday, they rather intend to go full Zimbabwe. Connor responded, does this imply that the stock to flow price should be reevaluated now based on all the burr? And Plan B responded, burr only means prices of all assets, gold, silver, diamonds, real estate, Bitcoin will go up if you express them in the things that is bird. If your price is in gold, nothing happens. Regardless of that, Bitcoin will take its natural place among all scarce assets based on the stock to flow. And if you're not familiar with the infamous stock to flow model, it predicts a $100,000 Bitcoin price by this time next year and a $288,000 Bitcoin price average between the years 2020 and 2024. I covered this in great detail in yesterday's episode. So if you missed it, be sure to check it out. All right, now let's check out this tweet from Dan Tapiro who wrote, prepare to be patient in Bitcoin. Each up cycle takes longer to play out and is less extreme as absolute dollar value gets much larger. May or may not be another six to 12 months before price breaks up. Should not matter as the end price point is obscenely higher. Hodlers rejoice and he included this graph which I'll include in the show notes below the video in the description. And it shows you uh, the first cycle which is in the red, the second cycle which is in the blue, the third cycle which is in the green, and the fourth cycle which is just starting to kick off as we can see in the purple. All right, now for our next story of the day. Three reasons why you're in finance price just hit a new high of $18,000. That's right, this morning it just touched 18K. It flipped on the Bitcoin price not too long ago. Now, if you're not familiar with YFI, here you go. The native token of the decentralized finance giant, Yearn Finance, achieved a new all time high, soaring by 30% in the last 12 hours from 14,000 to above 18,000, entering price discovery mode once again. If you're bullish on YFI, let me know in the comments right down below. There's no telling how much higher it can climb because that's when the FOMO, the fear of missing out, kicks in. You know what I mean? All right, now here's the three factors likely responsible for this price surge in YFI, which likely triggered the rally to a new all-time high, which is a potential new partnership, a listing on AVE, as well as strong technicals. Let's talk about it. On August 28th, the money market protocol AVE, better known as LEND, listed YFI. AVE is the largest DeFi protocol in the global market with more than 1.52 billion in total value locked. AVE received approval from the UK Financial Conduct Authority, which further secured the dominance of AVE over the DeFi market. Jordan Lazaro Gustav, the CEO of AVE told Cointelegraph, AVE will also be making credit delegation possible where party A can delegate their credit line to party B who can borrow against it. This will all be made possible by a legal agreement by open law. For example, a credit delegator could be a party that wants to build up more credit and a borrower could be a business, NGO, government, institution, etc. So although Yearn Finance has been a major DeFi protocol with nearly a billion dollars in value locked, AVE listing could further boost the momentum of YFI. I know there's some traders extremely bullish on YFI predicting it shoot up to $100,000. Now, just FYI, I'm not shilling YFI. I actually don't even own a bag. I just like covering the top stories in the crypto space, especially when we see movement like we're witnessing right here with YFI. Now, atop this new listing, you're in finance developer Andre Cronje said he is collaborating with FTX CEO Sam Bankman Fried. FTX is one of the top crypto derivatives exchanges and has been leading various partnerships in recent weeks, backed by the launch of a decentralized exchange 
call Serum and acquired Blockfolio. A potential collaboration between FTX and your finance developer goes in line with FTX's activity in the DeFi and DEX market. Cronje wrote, guess the cat is out of the bag, but just so that there's some expectation management, this is a long roadmap that we're working on. So it won't be anything anytime soon, but there will be something very sexy in the future. Your finance is also arguably valued lower compared to other major DeFi protocols with the billion dollars in value locked. As an example, Synthetics is valued at over 600 million, but has less value locked than Yearn Finance. Now, throughout the past month, Yearn Finance and its main developer, Cronje, has pushed out many products ranging from vaults to decentralized insurance. Yearn Finance announced the launch of Yinsure Finance as an example, which is one of the first tokenized insurance services in the DeFi space alongside Nexus Mutual. Now, a well-known venture capital investor, including Spartan Black's Kelvin Co. and Paradigm Fred Eshram said DeFi insurance has the potential to become a billion dollar market. So there you have it. Let me know if you're bullish on YFI in the comments right down below. And before we break down our next story of the day, traders say the Bitcoin price now faces two main scenarios, either 16,000 or 9,600. And here's why. First, let's take a look at the overall crypto market cap sitting at 359 billion with 98 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. And the current Bitcoin dominance is currently 59% even. Also consider if we exclude stable coins and ICOs, the realized market cap, which is the true Bitcoin dominance is closer to 80%. And now taking a look at the top gainers within the top 100, we have UMA up about 45%, trading at $11.28. Numeraire, which has been soaring like a mofo, up 39%, trading at $57. Yearn Finance up 21%, trading at $17,700. It's crazy even looking at it at this price. The Central Land up 18%, trading at 10 cents. Elrond up 15%, trading at 2 cents. And Ample Fourth up 13%, trading at 70 cents. Below that, we have Solana up 11%, trading at $3.94. And Synthetics Network up 10%, trading at $6.77. Now, out of this list of altcoins, which altcoins in particular are you most bullish on? Let me know in the comments right down below. And now checking out the biggest losers within the top 100 in the past 24 hours. We have Aragon down about 11%, trading at $7.60. Band Protocol, competitor to Chainlink and Oracle provider, down about 7%, trading at $12.49. Nervos Network down about 4%, trading at 0 0.006. iExec RLC down 3%, trading at $1.50. Nano down 3% trading at $1.18 and QTUM down 2% trading at $3.44. Below that, we have Kusama as well as NXM. And once again, out of this list of altcoins, which alts in particular are you most bullish on? Drop me a comment right down below. Don't be a stranger. And now checking out the BitMEX margins. We can see the bulls are barely in control, leading with 1 million in superiority in the last 24 hours with longs leading 50.06%. Versus 49.94% shorts. Are you currently bullish or bearish on the king of all crypto? Let me know. Holla at your boy. And now checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we're currently rated a 74 in greed. Yesterday was a 75 in greed. Last week, a 81 in extreme greed. And last month, a 71 in greed. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That can be a great buying opportunity. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for correction. All right, and before I break down this final story of the day, first I wanna remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the market. This goes for all 500 videos right here on my channel. Also wanna share some very helpful resources with you, including the blog to my podcast, which could be found right here at cryptonewsyes.com. Not only is this updated every single day, it also allows you to download the latest episode of the show in MP3 format. Also be sure to smash that subscribe button right below this video in the description or visit the direct link cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, you can find us on all the major podcasting platforms. We just surpassed 100,000 podcast downloads just yesterday. So I want to say I greatly appreciate your support. You can find us on Apple's iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, as well as Stitcher Radio. Also, you can find us on Twitter to receive daily crypto news alerts. My Twitter handle is crypto news. Yes. And for those of you active on Facebook as I am, I do have a crypto Facebook group entitled Crypto Alchemy with over 
over 17,000 cryptopreneurs just like yourself from all over the world. To become a part of it, simply click this link, request to join. I'll be sure to plug you in. And for those of you active on Telegram, Crypto Telegram is jumping. I do have a Crypto Telegram chat. To join it, click this link. You'll automatically be added. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you personally on the inside. All right, now let's break down our final story of the day. The price of Bitcoin has declined by more than 6% in the last three days with the 276 million CME Bitcoin futures expiry approaching on August 28th, which is today. So keep your eyes on this as traders are nervous that additional downside could be in store. Now, following Bitcoin's rejection at 12.5, traders foresee two key scenarios playing out over the short term. Some technical analysts believe that Bitcoin is headed to either 16,000 or 9,600 first, but the near-term outcome remains uncertain as it's dependent on certain resistance and support levels being hit. Let me know where you think the Bitcoin price is likely heading next. Do you feel we revisit below that $10,000 mark, closing those CME futures gaps, or do you feel we'll shoot on up to 16,000? Drop me a comment right down below. According to the pseudo-anonymous trader, Bidazine General, Bitcoin could rise to either 16K or drop to 9,600. If Bitcoin's weekly chart closes above 11,500, the trader said that chances of Bitcoin rallying to 16,000 increase. If the price remains below 10,500, the trader said 9,600 is the logical support. He wrote this, let's keep it simple. 11,500 key level. If weekly close above 16,000, if we close below 10,500, which is the obvious support because obvious 10,5 might do nothing like 6,000 in 2019, 9,600 is the next strong support, which is where we have those CME futures gaps. So there you have it. Another compelling reason traders might expect a brief pullback to the 9,600 to 97. 700 area is due to that infamous CME gap. These gaps form on the CME Bitcoin's futures market chart because of the regulated market closes during the weekend. A CME gap typically is closed within a short period of time, and this raises the chances of a pullback. There's also a small CME gap at 16,000, just in case you did not know, but only on the lower time frame chart where the gap has existed for literally years. In the short term, another crypto analyst called Maine said Bitcoin bulls would need to reclaim 11,700 failure to reclaim this higher resistance level could result in an extended consolidation phase, the analyst noted. Here is what you don't want to see as a bull. Price with the false break high and now stair stepping down. Last two up moves seem like clear bearish retests. If this is distribution, expect the selling to pick up speed soon. Bulls need to come in and regain 11,700. So there you have it. I provided both the bearish and bullish scenarios here for the Bitcoin price in the short term. I also provided you with plenty of hopium for the day as I gave you the case for Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss's $500,000 Bitcoin price. I also provided you with the latest from Plan B of the infamous stock to flow model, which predicts we can see a potential $20 million Bitcoin price. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Well, that's going to conclude today's show. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and journeying along with me inside this incredible crypto matrix. If you gain value out of today's show, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day just like this and real quick before i go if interested in tapping into opm and leveraging other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio smash the link right below this video in the description and register for this free system entitled opm wealth you'll be glad you did and i look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's episode peace